Well, very good morning, everybody, and welcome to our third talk in our Advent series. Um, we've looked in previous weeks at hope and at peace, and this morning we'll be looking at God gives us joy. And when I found out I was going to be speaking about this, I thought, brilliant, what's better to talk about than joy? Um, so I'm looking forward to this morning, and I hope you are too. Now, there's lots that we can say about joy, um, but I just want to make three points. Firstly, we have joy that the Messiah has come. Secondly, we have a joy that is indestructible. And thirdly, we have a joy that's for sharing. So let's dig into those three points now. Firstly, we have a joy that the Messiah has come. That's what we're celebrating at Christmas, isn't it? How do you feel when something that you've looked forward to for ages finally arrives? Maybe it's a holiday or a visit from a friend or some good news from the hospital or indeed getting our church building back. Gardeners plant a seed with hopeful expectation of a harvest, don't they? Um, I know there's always great joy when Stephen brings in produce from his allotment. The reason that we celebrate with such joy at Christmas is because the long awaited Messiah has come. The people of Israel that we read about in the Old Testament had held on to God's promises for generations, that he would send someone into the world to save them from slavery and bring them into the fullness of God's promises, being God's people in God's land, living under God's rule. The Messiah is someone who is appointed to accomplish God's saving purposes for his people. So we read in the Old Testament lots of prophecies about him so that people wouldn't miss the coming Messiah when he arrived. These are just a few of the uh, prophecies that we can see are fulfilled in Jesus. So the Messiah would be from the tribe of Judah and a descendant of Abraham and Isaac. None of his bones would be broken even after a brutal death. He would be mocked and people would gamble for his clothes. He would be the son of God. The Messiah would be raised from the dead. He would be born in Bethlehem to a virgin. He would die for the sins of the world and be rejected by his own people. He would ride into Jerusalem on a donkey. And the Messiah, who is God, would be crucified. The Old Testament scriptures show that Jesus was anticipated and hoped for. He was always God's plan to bring salvation to the world. The people of Israel knew that God had promised someone who would bring salvation, even if they didn't fully understand the nature and the scope of that salvation. So in the 400 year period between the Testaments, God's people are watching and waiting for God's promises to be fulfilled. So let's pick up the passage from Luke that Angelica kindly read for us earlier. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David a Saviour has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. After all the waiting and trusting in God's promises, the Messiah is finally here. His birth is a cause of great joy for all people because Jesus offers salvation to everyone everywhere if they believe and trust in him. We celebrate good news that brings great joy. Jesus ushers in God's kingdom where God reigns and the devastating effects of human rebellion against God are overturned. We've just sung that lovely song, haven't we? Joy to the world, the Lord has come. Let earth receive her king. Christian joy is rooted in the coming of Jesus to live a sinless life, to die on the cross for our rebellion and to rise again, beating death once and for all. Early on in Jesus's ministry, he has a conversation with a Samaritan woman at the well. We read in John 4, 25 to 26. The woman said, I know that Messiah called Christ is coming. When he comes, he will explain everything to us. Then Jesus declared, I, the one speaking to you, I am he. 
Jesus was the Messiah that all the prophecies pointed to. In Jesus, there is salvation for the whole world, not just for the Jewish nation. Everyone who puts their trust in him will have eternal life. What a reason for joyful celebration. So that's the first point. We have joy because the promised Messiah has come. Secondly, we have a joy that is indestructible. Joy and happiness are links, aren't they? But they're not the same thing. Happiness is often dependent on our circumstances, whereas joy is much deeper. I don't know about you, but one of the things that makes me really happy is hanging out with a group of friends, laughing and joking, maybe enjoying a delicious meal and a glass of wine. But this year has deprived us all of happy times with family and friends. We haven't been able to meet together so much. We haven't been able to meet together as a church and we've been cut off from much of the community that makes us happy. This year has been undeniably tough for us all. There have been some brilliant moments. Um, I think a highlight for me was Becca and Alex's wedding. But there's also been a lot of sadness as well. So how do we embrace Christian joy in the midst of all that? A Christian supposed to try and be happy about everything. Now, I'm going to sound the out of date cultural reference klaxon here, so be prepared. There was a comedy sketch right back in the in the 1990s called The Fast Show, which my brother and I loved. And there was a character in that who used to say how everything was brilliant all the time. So here comes my extremely bad impression of him. Ah, oh, the holidays, brilliant. You can go to foreign countries, any you like, like France or that other one. And you go on a plane, planes are brilliant. Imagine what holidays would be like without him. To get to France, you'd have to swim the channel with your suitcases and your pyjamas would get all wet. Brilliant. <laughs> Are we supposed to be like him and try to find everything brilliant? Well, no, thankfully. Joy isn't fake happiness. It isn't about trying to force happiness when actually circumstances are horrible and difficult and painful. The Bible is very realistic about the pain and suffering that all Christians will face. In 2 Corinthians, Paul lists all the stuff he suffered, including beatings and imprisonments and riots. Then he says he is sorrowful, yet always rejoicing. Sorrowful, yet always rejoicing. He isn't delighted about being in prison. He doesn't enjoy being beaten. And yet he has a joy that isn't dependent on his circumstances. The joy of knowing Christ is indestructible, even in suffering. Earlier, Joanna read for us a passage from 1 Peter that talks about greatly rejoicing, even in the midst of suffering. Our ultimate example of joy in suffering is Jesus himself who, for the joy set before him, endured the cross, scorned its shame and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. You can read about that in Hebrews chapter 12. In spite of circumstances, we can have joy in God's love and promise. We can rejoice that nothing can separate us from God's love. I love this passage at the end of Romans 8, which says, For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. So we can have joy that we can never be separated from Christ's love. And we can have joy in the certain hope of the new creation. We know that one day Jesus will come back and that there will be no more pain or suffering. Listen to these amazing words from Revelation chapter 21. Look, God's dwelling place is now among the people and he will dwell with them. They will be his people and God himself will be with them and be their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain, for the old order of things has passed away. So that's the second point. Christian joy isn't dependent on circumstances. Joy is indestructible. And finally, we have a joy that's worth sharing. How do you react when you get good news or find out something exciting? 
Well, we instinctively want to tell other people, don't we? When I found out I had a nephew, I shared cute pictures of him on Facebook and uh, every time I saw a friend, I was showing them pictures and telling them all about him. Or sometimes I read, read an amazing book and think, oh, I've got to let other people know about this because they'd enjoy it too. We have parties and celebrations, don't we? We give presents at birthdays, weddings, graduations and other joyful occasions because it's good to celebrate together. We tell people joyful news so that they can rejoice with us and also so that they can benefit from the joy themselves. This is something common to almost all human cultures across the world throughout the ages. And it was no different in Jesus' day. Listen to this story that he tells about a lady who loses a coin. Or suppose a woman has ten silver coins and loses one. Doesn't she light a lamp, sweep the house and search carefully until she finds it? And when she finds it, she calls her friends and neighbours together and says, Rejoice with me, I found my lost coin. In the same way, I tell you, there is rejoicing in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. In the same way that people celebrate the recovery of something that was lost, be it a coin or a sheep or a re rebellious son, there is rejoicing in heaven and on earth when someone who was lost in rebellion towards God is re reunited with him. That's the good news that we as Christians can share joyfully. We all have a story to tell about how our relationship with God was restored through Jesus. That's the best thing that's ever happened to us and it's too good not to share. Christmas is a time when we celebrate the good news of Jesus coming to save the world and we live in a world that desperately needs to hear that. We have really good news of great joy for the world. You know, it's fun to eat an entire box of chocolates all by yourself, isn't it? But it's much more fun to gather with friends and share with them the love and friendship as well as the chocolates. The good news of Jesus is too good to keep to ourselves. It's much better. It's meant to be shared with other people. So that's the final point. Christian joy is too good to keep to ourselves. Joy is for sharing. So just to conclude, we've seen that we have joy that the Messiah has come. Jesus was anticipated and promised by God right from the beginning. The prophecies confirm that Jesus is the one true God who came into the world to save us. So let's have confidence in the truth of his word and assurance in his salvation. We've also seen that joy is indestructible. No matter what circumstances we're going through, nothing can separate us from God's love in Jesus. We have a deep-rooted joy that can never be taken away, and we can confidently look forward to the renewal of all creation. And finally, we have a joy that's for sharing. We have the best news that it's possible to share, better than a birthday, better than a new job, better even than a COVID vaccine. Our families and friends need to hear about the salvation that's only found in Jesus. So let's pray for opportunities to share it with them. Let's be bold in talking about and living out the joy that we have in Christ. Let me pray to finish. Lord, thank you so much that you have brought joy into the world. Thank you that Jesus came to fulfil all the promises of the hoped for Messiah. Lord, thank you that he is the one that the people of God were waiting for. Lord, thank you that he has brought salvation to the nations and that all who put their trust in him can know the joy of relationship with you that will last forever. Lord, thank you that our joy isn't contingent on our circumstances, that we can be joyful about all the riches that we have in Christ, whatever is going on in our lives. And Lord, thank you that we have the best news it's possible to have, the good news of Jesus, a gospel that is really worth sharing. Lord, I pray for us this week that we will pray for and look for and take opportunities to share the joy that we have with our family and friends and those that we meet. And we pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks for listening. <laughs>